Dennis Tardon, and uh, I fancy myself an interviewer, and I fancy myself having a very fancy person with me named Lotus Weinstock, a comedian, it says here, a comic with a sense of love. I saw your program, Lotus, and here on Theta Cable, and it was delightful. Thanks, Dennis. You did express A little love me. in the beginning, a little love, a little, little pat on the back. Yeah, well, you, you did call me that day after you saw it, and you really uh, made me feel like you'd completely duplicated what I intended to put out. Yeah. And it, it, it was uh, very validating, made me feel terrific. Well, how does it feel as a comment? Because you have, you have to get a point of view across. You've got to bring everybody in to your point of view and then translate this humor to them. And you did that. You did that to me, or at least that's what I felt. And you really get into the inside. I've written before, and it kind of feels the same way. What was the question? I had no question. Oh. I, was making, I was making one of those long, definitive statements that has no point, hoping that you'll come back with something. I did. I said, what was the question? Oh, Lotus, here we go again. I'm a little bit nervous. This is my first show, so I'm going to try to relax, or you can help me, help me to relax. And... Shall we chant? Chant. Sure. All right, go ahead. Um, ah, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no. I feel better. I feel relieved. I feel here now. Yeah. I need. I need some disco, actually. Do you like disco? I love it. I don't. I don't go to discos, but whenever I uh, turn the radio on to an AM station and it's in the house, I definitely move my little uh, body around. Mm -hmm and enjoy it immensely, and I, uh, I disco in my act. I like dancing. Dancing, there is something primitive about dancing, something that you get into and you start really moving. I, I have a theory that maybe, that it's not so much that black people have rhythm, it's just that they've started a rumor that white people don't. And white people have actually have rhythm, but it has to be rediscovered, and you have to throw off all these inhibitions, and I'm learning that perhaps the opposite side of inhibition the opposite side of the coin is talent. And, you know, as people throw off their inhibitions, the talent rises and the dancing, you get into what, you know, actually vibrationally the music is. Well, I, the rhythm is the law of the universe, you know, contraction, expansion. We yeah. all, everybody has their own rhythm to discover, you know. We all have our own little drummer in there that we have to... Uh, work very hard to rediscover sometimes. You I know? know, but you get out on the dance floor and you see everybody doing these real syncopated rhythms and this and, and to actually to get out there and just to do whatever it is that you want to do. It's just that I can't take the noise, the noise level. And the, that's a pain threshold. I've never gotten off to pain and, and I actually get into a, a pain level when I hear music that loud for that extended period of time. Well, don't go for a long time then. You know, just stop in for <laughs> five, dances, ten minutes, that's right? It. Really? I, once again, I, I, when, I, dancing, you're not thinking while you're dancing, you know, or you can, but it is, certainly is a way to get the circulation going and, and enjoy yourself. A lot of people are doing their yoga to, uh, to disco now, yeah. or Tai Chi. Do you know how to party? I mean, Do I know party, how to party? You mean get party, down? Get down and party. I can uh, definitely uh, put on a party attitude every so often. Of course, you know, you have to have a party when you're performing, because if you're not having fun, you will not be funny. <laughs> having fun. When you're up there, when you're up there and you have an audience because you perform at the comedy store and you perform on this, and I have a feeling you're going to be performing at other places and doing very well for yourself, having fun. And everything is just really going right. Is there a higher, higher than that? A higher, higher. Is there a higher high than that? How can you compare highs? High is high. I mean, you know you're high when you wouldn't want to stop doing what you're doing in order to do something else, you know? I've often said, like, laughter. Laughter is one of the most wonderful ways to make love. You know, I mean, with the universe and just being mm -hmm. there. For instance, if I was having a terrific belly laugh, I would not want to stop to, to make love, you know? By the same token, if I was about to... Uh, uh, climax, I wouldn't want to stop to laugh either, you know, but... Oh, yeah. Awesome. Well, I smile during sex. I mean, I usually, I, I do, and it, and it sometimes freaks people out, but I do that because I, I'm having fun, and I usually smile when I'm having fun, and uh, a chortle or a guffaw, usually not during climax, and that, that is a little bit un, 
unnerving, you know, at that time. But I try and and let people know that I'm having a good time. You know, politeness, manners count, don't they? So you say thank you very much. He of says, I'm course. having a wonderful time. Having a wonderful time. I was taught manners. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten my manners. Uh, Always remember Southern to say background. please and thank, and thank you. you. You're welcome, and and the the whole line it uh, it encourages uh, repetitive behavior, and there's you know there's no sense in, in in discouraging people. But I find that that sex itself uh, is fun, but it's not any more fun than anything else I do. I mean, I I I'm a pretty fun. I have a lot of fun. I'll tell you, I I think. Everybody got stuck there because it was denied for so long. What people won't look at or won't confront today will become tomorrow's obsession. Yeah. And it was denied. People didn't talk about it. I, I mean, I ask my daughter to share everything she hears with me as soon as she hears it. You have it. a nine-year-old daughter, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Cherub. Cherub, yeah. Cherub. Cherub. Uh, she'll be nine on Christmas Day. And I want her to know that, that I know the answers. So, uh, you know, she doesn't go to someone who doesn't love her nearly as much as I do to find out, Sure. you know? And so, um, I, when I was looking at my, uh, my half hour on Theta Cable that I did by myself, I was thinking, I was look, trying to look at it through the eyes of, a, of a, um, an Orthodox Catholic and see whether they knew, in fact, that I had the same uh, spiritual aspirations as perhaps they did, which is, True love, true, true oneness with the Creator and, and the creation, you know, and, and how could I yet be talking about orgasm at the same, at the sure. same time, except that uh, if, if we don't talk about it, if we don't allow it to come out, it's going to, you know, people are going to sneak into pornographic picture shops, you know. Do you really think it's different? I mean, you're, uh, uh, you and I are about the same age, so. Uh, when, when, we were, when we were growing up, there was a real taboo on it. I mean, the, we did have the pornographic stores, and we had the, I mean, the, the movies were not even explicit. I mean, it was really important when Deep Throat came out, there were court rulings on it. If you can imagine, here in Hollywood, it's playing for its sixth smash year, it says, and nobody thinks a thing out of it, uh, about it. So things really have changed. And what, what is it doing? I mean, like, is there a real difference between the friends that you're having sex with and the friends that you're not having sex with qualitatively in your friendships? Of course. The, 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 uh, the lovemaking act is a very spiritual, very sacred, magical act where two people uh, unite. It's, it's, it's one of the most magic, it's the most, one of the most magical acts okay. you can do. You can have a child from that. Then, what could be more uh, magical? All right, you know? then is it, then do you have, uh, relationships that you're not having sexuality with a person that it actually seems like the relationship has less quality than of course not there are all various ways to ah, to, but to you uh, see, communicate I, your affinity uh, you know sure but that's the thing not not putting the relationships uh, on a on a, a linear level where one is you know one goes to uh, 3.5 on this scale uh, because the, you're not having sex and and this one goes to 4.5 you know and if you measure relationships you know who, who does that this i'm sure there are people who measure relationships yeah. you know, it appears to me that especially coming from what i've worked through that measurement of relationships and measurement of the quality is is a really big thing in our, in 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 this society. Uh, How do you like that? Isn't that a great question? One, you know, uh, I I I think we could probably start discussing something else. Now. I felt like that that was yeah. a completed cycle. What do you think? Sure, I do too. Do you, you don't look, look happy the, though? So maybe we, there's something there we haven't discussed yet. I'm not Ask sure. me a question because I'm I, make it hard. Make it hard. Oh, a tough question, yeah. huh? All right. Um, is red your favorite color? It's oh, a while back. I think it was my first acid trip. Oops. I decided I didn't have a favorite oh. color. I didn't. Because if you have a favorite color and you can't have that color, then you won't be happy. I, that was one of the most incredible things that I experienced. An acid trip? A LSD, lysergic acid. I admit that I took it in the... Uh, 60s and um, I had quite an experience I saw colors I, I saw God I came right to God in fact uh, 
I was quite relieved, to be quite honest. I mean, the papers were saying that God was dead. You were talking about that before, but in sure. fact, it turns out it just made good copy. And uh, I, could, I could hear God talking. I heard God speak, and uh, would you like to know what he said? Oh, of course. He said, leave me alone for God's sake! The only people I even like anymore are the atheists because they play hard to get. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of people are constantly nagging him. It's giving me a shag rug. God, I want a, a tape deck. How about a CB radio? You know, it's constantly give me, give me, give me. And there are so many people trying to get his attention, her attention these days. They're standing on their heads for hours. Their breathing come through my nostrils like cheap vanilla incense. He hates it. <laughs> come into consciousness through drugs. I mean, like, the LSD is not, uh, you had the experience, and I haven't, and that was one of the things, you know, coming out to L.A. from, you know, Texas, Victoria, Texas. I mean, Victoria, Texas is not what you want to call your cosmopolitan center of the universe. L.A. is. You can get anything in the city, anything at all, anything that you wanted, you know. I, uh, I, cannot, I cannot believe it, and that's one of my... That's one of the experiences that I wanted when I came out here and expected to find it all over, but nobody's doing that. They're real plastic. You thought you were going to see that the streets were paved with quaaludes, uh, right? Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody taking it. I went to a Hollywood party, and I have sinus. And it was a real genuine Hollywood party with some stars there and this, and I was sitting over in the corner talking to some people I knew, and I used my nose spray and, they and thought stopped it was cocaine? the party. Everyone stopped talking and turned around and looked at me, and there I'm sitting there with my plastic That's bottle hysterical. up my nostril and, and it, it really, of course I didn't know. I still don't know, but I don't know much about this town, but I'm learning. Did uh, you pass your nose spray around? No, no, but I would was have been suddenly much more popular after that. That was, that's for sure. It would have been interesting to see if they'd gotten high from it, you mm. know? Sometimes I think people get hooked on the gestures that go with it, you know? Yeah. Um, well, I fortunately got over, uh, worked through my drug period in the 60s, yeah. and... Uh, what are people into now? What are your friends into now? My, most of my friends are, are uh, into reality. Oh, it's a very exciting day. Oh, right? into yes. reality. Yes. Yeah, they've, a lot of us health worked through our trips in those days. Yeah. Well, moderate health food. I was at one time a health food junkie. I had to, I took everything to its extreme, you know, and I, I <laughs> No joined, moderation here. Right. I, I, uh, <laughs> I was a moderate extremist, though. And I, I went see. to, I put my, because I always, just at the point where I was really flirting with danger, would find a, a polarity that would kind of save me. So I, like, I put myself in the Schick Center for the control of health food addicts. <laughs> and uh, what they do there is every time you reach for, like, a sprout, a lot of sprouts sure. or a carrot, <laughs> they slap you with a huge piece of bacon. <laughs> And uh, it helped me, so now I'm, I'm eating uh, more moderately, you know. Yeah, I, I still try to eat food that, that looks like it has life in it, or that it definitely will, uh, you know, like when it's supposed to be green, it is green, you know. Yeah, sure. I didn't like vegetables uh, until I began eating fresh vegetables and find out that there really is a difference between the stuff that they put in the cans and the stuff that you get right out oh, of the garden at the quite time. I mean, I mean, broccoli really honestly tastes good. I always thought broccoli tasted like this horrible green withered sprout that was on my plate, but it's not. It's delicious. You should put some o olive oil and tamari on there. It's excellent. Tamari. Very I like tamari mm. sauce. I learned a lot from the Japanese when I was over there. Sure. Did you? Yeah. Have, are you, do you eat your parsley when you're in a restaurant? I'm doing a survey. It never tastes. Well, that's because they're making it in Japan now. That I'm really curious about it. In fact, one of my big causes is to get real parsley back into the fast food chains because when I go into those restaurants, it's the only thing I'll eat, of course. And uh, I've, I just joined the Parsley Growers of America. And once a month, we meet and we pick at Denny's and Tiny Nailers, you know. and. Um, then we have this marvelous banquet dinner afterwards. You know what we serve? We have, a, for our main course, is a huge sp a sprig of parsley and a little garni of meat and potatoes. <laughs> playful, eh? Lord, it's One must playful. be playful. <laughs> <laughs> Do you meditate? Have you gotten into all, have you done just about everything? And you know, the spiritual trip has its own, has its own spiritual groupies and spirit, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure it's just the whole thing. I mean, have you gone the entire gamut of that also? Well, let's put it this way. I did check out a lot of trips. In fact, I was into subud, macrobiotic, scream therapy. <laughs> I, it's where you scream your uh, guts out to get to the heart of your problem, which turns out to be nodes in your throat. And on dream therapy and uh, 
I mean, I am not knocking any of them because. Um, Isn't this a person? Asked, I took past. Past, <laughs> past is where you have a, uh, a little, it's where you pester yourself into being a nice person. You know, you have a little Jewish chimney cricket by the name of Elaine Pincus that sits on your shoulder saying, be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. Okay, Elaine, okay, thank you. And then, but honestly, I don't, I don't want to knock them because from each yeah. one of these things, I did get a very valuable technique, Dennis, for getting in touch every day. And I practice all these. Every morning when I wake up, I stand on my head for 20 minutes. Yeah. I do joy breathing. I salute the angel of the air, earth, fire, and water. I say goodbye to the moon in 20 languages. I say hello to the sun. The only problem is that by the time I'm finished my morning meditation, it's 9 o'clock at night, and then it's time for my evening meditation. So I have to go now. <laughs> oh, no, no <laughs> but, oh, wait. Before you go, I want to ask you, who are we being when we're not being ourselves? Now, be yourself, be yourself. You were saying that. Who, Bert who, who? Lance. I, 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 no, I, I, Pinky Lee. Yeah. You who? It's me. I don't know. We all, you know what, as we're growing up, we see so many people uh, playing so many games, and uh, it's been my experience, and now I understand that quite often we will emulate the people who won in the various situations. Even if it's not such a nice person, if we see that not nice person winning, winning or surviving better than the nice person, Sometimes, quite often, we'll take on that um, that exterior or that behavior pattern. Even if know? in winning that it didn't make that person happy. I mean, we have seen, I have seen so many, I've seen beautiful women that were doing their beautiful thing and being beautiful, and it was very obvious if you looked into their eyes or looked between, uh, at the space between their eyes, that these people were just not happy, even though they were doing the thing that was supposed to be happy and they were getting all the externalized gratification, you know, of being beautiful and this, and it just still wasn't enough. Well, you see, not, people don't always do these things consciously. You know? Yeah, so I mean, uh, so, I, mean we're, we're, I don't th I think people are basically good. You know? I do and, too. And uh, I think that uh, we really have uh, some ways of screwing that up for them. <laughs> you know, parents, parents, sometimes this is a matter of convenience. You try to uh, reduce your child into obedience, you know, rather than self determinism. And there's a fine line between that, you know, where where you uh, your child obeys because it's afraid that it'll be des destroyed or not loved if it doesn't, as opposed to you know doing what's what's righteous or optim you know for the optimum survival. Yeah. Well, being a, being a, being a parent and. Uh Put you in an interesting space because you're, I mean, you, this isn't a pet you have. It's not something that you can, that you can just pass off of that. You actually, you know, you have a soul that, that is, that that for however long is in your care. How do you not be attached to it? I mean, not actually realize that while you are the parent, it is just merely kind of a temporary thing rather than being, you know, a real strong, you know, I'm going to mold you and shape you into the image that I want you to be. Well. I find that you know uh, I'll throw a chair of a bone every so often, and I, I, uh, you know, change the litter. I've just no, I've just taken her leash off. She's, you know, no, my my daughter <laughs> is uh, so wonderful. She's teaching me so much, and we have a a real good partnership. I, I um, remind her every so often that it's fifty one forty nine. You know, just because I've been around the uh, sun a few more times than she has that I know about in this particular body yeah. you know do children play power games I mean do they actually do they actually test and and, and I hate to generalize about children all right my, let me say one daughter, child one child my daughter yeah my daughter is uh, sure the people want to know how far they can go they, they you know they're trying on their uh, their earthly oats you know and, trying and you want their personality know. sure they they, they 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 see a lot. They see, hey, does this one fit me? Does this particular behavioral dress fit me? And mm -hmm. and uh, but but my daughter lets me share it. I mean, she'll look up and I'll be laughing at, uh, with joy over her something she just tried out. And you know, and I don't even have to say anything. She can feel the validation. She knows. She she reads me mm -hmm. just perfectly, just like I read her. Perfectly. You like her. I am just nuts about her. I am crazy. Well, about you her. like her. I mean, uh, but this is this is a this is a heavy concept. I mean, because we heavy kind of that word. No, don't that, worry. It's okay. That's okay. okay. I have uh, since I've got out, gotten out here, I've I've become averse to words that I was never averse to out there because I've because I've suddenly am conscious of them. I'll say a word and everybody will snicker because it's not yeah, the current. Yeah, I know. When I it say is cosmic, not a current word and and that's a, but I've got it. That's my own problem because I've got. 
got to learn to talk however it is I talk. And you will not be allowed into the 80s if we hear you using the word heavy again. <laughs> okay. That's not so prevalent as it used to be. The, Look, do you know what so I stay, love Stay with you. We're talking about the children, you know, and I, this is one of my favorite subjects because I feel real okay. good about my relationship with my daughter. Okay. I'd love to share we, it. We've got, we've got ten more minutes in this particular okay. segment. Since okay. I saw that, I wanted to tell you. Uh, I, wa I want to bring up, we'll come back to children, but I want to say, have you, you actually noticed that now women are able to dress whatever way they look good in instead of having to ascribe to a, to a certain style, like the, uh, you know, like tight pants with small, you know, a anyone can wear whatever it is that yeah. makes them look good. Yeah. Plus the fabrics. We send, spend so little of our budget on, on clothes. Do you remember when, if you were able to buy a new dress, it was a big deal? I mean, like, a, I'm talking about like, a really big deal. It took a significant portion of the, uh, of the budget. Now with the new petroleum, fabrics, anybody can dress well if they want to, or can dress down or dress in blue jeans or whatever. And it has taken clothes out of, the, out of a, a judgmental place where it says, well, I dress this way and, and you can tell a lot about me. Well, you can't tell a lot about people anymore as far as their society. Uh, did you get anything from that? Did you get anything at all that you could <laughs> say anything from? Yeah, well, I have, uh, <laughs> I have a basic philosophy on fashion. And uh, that is, if you only have one toe, you should not wear thongs. Other than that, you have no philosophy on fashion. Well, I was annoyed when they were, you know, the Vogue style was always for girls who had legs up to their neck, you know, the type that buys a pantsuit and doesn't need the jacket. And, uh, you know, I, I came from a, a short leg tribe. <laughs> and uh, I mean they get me around and I'm, I'm delighted with them and uh, well I have my length in other areas you know but yes I'm, I'm really glad that women are you're allowed to express yourself as an individual now and uh, I, I think I've said enough about uh, fashion <laughs> okay. let's go back to children let's go back to children and being being together and liking you know the difference we were talking about the difference between love and like and uh, I like whether or not you like someone, and I, I've, seen, I've been in a lot of families and been in a lot of family situations where the parent really just didn't like the kid, loved the kid, but yeah. didn't really like the kid, didn't, th you know, didn't get off to the kid's personality, didn't get off to, uh, to the, the, the trips that the, the child was going through for whatever reason, maybe the melodrama was like well, real heavy Well, may I time. stop you there? See, you, um, you see so many wonderful things and they all seem to answer themselves, so... But I wanted to say something right in that slot, okay? Go right uh, ahead. Okay, now what was it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, uh, that a lot of the times, you know, we get torn between how we were raised and how we intuitively know that you've got, got to allow each child to raise itself along with you. I mean, each, each relationship is entirely unique. And I know some people who come in and see my relationship with my child sometimes resent the freedom, that she, the particular kind of freedom that she has because they were not granted that space themselves and uh, they, uh, they find it very difficult to give that to someone else. Sure. You see, like my daughter, we have a very disciplined thing going on within our freedom. Uh, she, she, she's, I didn't try, I've tried to impart self-discipline. She plays violin and she's quite committed to it every single day. She does that. now. It, it was difficult at first when all her friends were watching TV, right, and she had to uh, change from, you know, to separate herself from the group and go and do her thing. But now it's, uh, she's got the good habit, you know. In fact, we have a, there's a fair exchange program going on where she's allowed to watch as much TV as she creates. If she, in other words, if she creates uh, a story or the violin or whatever, how much she puts out, then she's allowed to receive because the TV does the work for you. Sure. You know, I one, I one day I, she was watching for about three hours in a row and she got, uh, you know, she went somewhere with me and she was kind of dumb that day. You know, she just wasn't, her wheels weren't turning and it dawned on me that she had just received too much, the yin energy, if you will, and didn't balance it with yang. So. She agreed to that. She's pretty good about that, you know. Does television freak you out? No, it's wonderful. It's a it wonderful, wonderful me. thing. I well, mean, it, it does me in the, in the sense that of the incredible power 
of the medium. I mean, like, people are able to sit there. Oh, I see what you're saying. With a screen. I see. And, that and watch a conversation. They don't have to be involved. They don't have to have, on any ego level, I mean, it really has a chance to really play something out. Oh, yeah, I see what you're saying. My point of view about television is I, I'm so glad to be part of the creative mm. end of it, finally, you know. So my feelings about it are, I mean, it's such a wonderful way to communicate. You know, but I do say yes. Of course, anything that takes over a person's life is is scary, and, and some people are definitely owned by their TVs. There's no question about it, and and that is scary, and or it's. Uh, and it, yeah. with the new technology and the giant screens and the holograms and this sort of stuff, it's not going to get any easier to get away from that thing. You know, to get away from television. I mean, there 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 is. When, when somebody puts on a show, they're giving whether or not, I mean, it may come across as, as, as tripe to you, but they're giving their, pretty much their best effort at trying to entice you for a period of time, which is, which means you've got 24 hours that people are just doing their, their damnedest to try to, really to draw you in. And whether or not they're succeeding, that's the why that I'd like to know. Why aren't they, why aren't they succeeding more? Succeeding more, more at that. what? I, I read your mind. I knew you were going to say succeeding more at really enticing and, and really stimulating and exciting the people that are watching. Uh. I don't understand the concept so much of escape fantasy. It doesn't, you know, where somebody gets so enraptured in something that they actually, you know, they, they talk about forgetting about their own problems. I think we're about to see a, a big. I already see the th some real big threads of, uh, of uh, imparting much more reality in even the sitcoms. The few I've seen this year from this year, uh, you know, that just premiered. Yes. I, I had some, I got some chills. Mm -hmm. There was a, a scene in, in Taxi uh, that was very warm and very moving. And then uh, last night, that McLean Stevenson thing for. You know, that I, I found that quite It's weird. happening. It's happening on television. There are, there may only be a few people, but I have a feeling it only takes like about 1% of any industry or 1% of any population or 1% to really affect significant change on the consciousness of an entire industry. And I think that's happening. Uh, I, I people feel are relating differently. I feel like, well, you know, for the 70s, it was almost like a repeat of the Eisenhower generation. I mean, look what was most popular. It was uh, Laverne and Shirley and, you know, the throwbacks to the 50s. And I feel like we're approaching um, the 60s again, in a sense. You know, the How are we? Are we're, but we're tiptoeing up to them. I mean, it's almost like we're dabbling. We'll go here and pick one, one thing out and it'll be Jane Fonda and John Voight, you know, and, and so we'll, we'll work through that. No, well, this is going to be the 80s. I mean, dabbling, I don't want to yeah. just keep repeating myself. What I'm saying, though, is that, that I mean, there's a reach and withdrawal. In the 60s, there was, everybody was putting out, putting out, and then in the 70s, we went back to have the dream again and say, well, see, I mean, we, we got, some of the visions we had were not induced naturally. We couldn't maintain it. We had to go back. That's why a lot of people went into therapies. All those therapies came out so that, so that we could, you know, build ourselves up to it gradually and, and be able to have those visions again, but without having to use drugs. I mean, that's what a lot of my friends have been into, you know. And I think we're about to come out, uh, you know, not quite so angry this time. Mm -hmm. but the paranoia where the police create the hippies and the hippies create the police has been dissipated somewhat by not having the central theme of the war. Discuss that in eight seconds. Well, <laughs> okay. okay. Discuss that in one minute or discuss anything in one minute because that's how long is left. Uh, let's see, what can we, um, can, oh, can I say a poem? And part of flower no, a in a poem. minute. I loved, I loved what you told me the other day. I don't know who said that. Uh, uh, why can angels fly? Because they take themselves lightly. Yeah. That's real sweet. Did we take ourselves lightly, Lotus? Let me think about that, Dennis. God. Well, um, no, here it was. Here it was. Uh, 30 minutes. Did we Lotus, don't do that to me. What was I doing? I, I was, that was taking I'm, my seriousness, seriousness lightly. That's all. I'm sorry. You're I lightly mean. serious. You're lightly serious about taking your seriousness lightly. Oh, there is too God. much seriosity. Everything's everything. Good night. It? Goodbye. But